Take for example, when I was teaching on Amalek, remember what God said. He said, I will wipe out Amalek. He said, I will make war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now, that's what God said. God said he will make war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now, that scripture should make us think that means God is going to make war with Amalek. The next thing we see, Joshua is fighting Amalek. Now, I thought God said he's going to make more war with, with Amalek. The next thing is Joshua is making the war. Why? Because if God says, I'm going to make war with Amalek, he's going to do it through Joshua. We've had countless testimonies like this. Brethren will be in a car, all right, and get involved in an accident. And they'll tell you that most of the time before, you know, and, and they were delivered from the accident. Most of the time before the accident happened, a lot of, it, a lot of them will tell you that they began to speak in tongues. We had a testimony like that. We've had quite a number of them. He said, while they were driving, all of a sudden, they just felt like speaking in tongues. And they were speaking in tongues. And they were speaking in tongues. And they were speaking in tongues. Tongue. Then the accident happens and they, nothing happens to them. No scratch. Nothing. What happened? God delivered them. How? Through them. So you see, for you to say, God is all powerful without understanding how God wields his power, it's going to go against you. You'll be expecting magic. Listen, don't ignore the Holy Spirit. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. When things are dark, talk to the Holy Spirit. When things are not moving well, talk to the Holy Spirit. No, sometimes when you mess up, talk to the Holy Spirit. He knows what to do. When you mess up, talk to the Holy Spirit. You go and say, Holy Spirit, I made a mistake. I did it. Nobody's responsible. I did it. But I know you can help me. I know you can help me. Then start crying. I'm telling you, I'm okay. It works for me. I don't know if it works for you. What if I make the mistake and I know that I made a mistake? I said, Holy Spirit. So this one, I, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm wrong. All right. I'm very sorry for what I did. But Holy Spirit, I, I know you will help me. I know this one, this matter, you you will be on my side in this matter. When I finish seeing it. <laughs> Anytime you see in the Bible the angel, that's the Holy Spirit. When you see an angel, that's an angel. But when you see the angel, that's the Holy Spirit. Why is he calling him the angel of his presence? Because you see, how we, we get to enjoy the presence of God, the conveyor of the presence of God is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit brings us the presence of God. So the moment we start praying and you start feeling the presence of God, the reason why you're feeling is because the Holy Spirit brought it. So he makes the presence of God real to us. So he's a, the, the transporter. That's why it's called the angel, the transporter of the presence of God. He said the angel of his presence saved them. Number one, that means the Holy Spirit has a ministry of salvation. The Holy Spirit has a ministry of salvation. Now I'm going to talk about two types of salvation here now. The first salvation is the salvation of your spirit. That means how you became born again. Nobody can be born again without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says by one spirit we are baptized into the body of Christ. It's the Holy Spirit who makes us able to even believe the gospel. Then the second salvation is the salvation of deliverance. It's the Holy Spirit who has prevented that accident from happening. That day the accident happened, that not happened to you was the Holy Spirit. He said it was the angel of his presence that saved them. That saved them. He saved them. Have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let him know your voice. Let him know you. Anything you're going to do, you know, sometimes you're going to, you're going to enter something and, you know, it's not going to turn out well. And you talk to the Holy Spirit, he tells you, this one's not going to go well. You know, I love the Holy Spirit so much. He can tell you when you're going to the wrong relationship. All right? And you will still enter it and he'll still be helping you. He'll be telling you, okay, so here, here, here you are, it's not good. But you see, this person is this, so be this, do that. They'll be helping you. I just wonder, how? How? How is he doing that? Isaiah 63. You see, there's when he leads you, but there's also when he causes you. When he causes you, is different. It's, at that time, it's not like you've heard a voice. You don't hear any voice. At that time, you just realize that the steps you are taking are the correct ones. You just realize that the steps you are taking are the correct ones. You just realize that there's nothing like mistake. There's nothing like mistake for you. You just realize that the steps you are taking are the correct ones. It, it, it happens to me a lot, especially in the year. That's why at the beginning of every year, I spend time to pray a lot. Because when I pray a lot, something happens. There's an alignment. There's an alignment. 
There's an alignment. An alignment is done. So I pray a lot at the beginning of the year. So that in, during the year, I just find myself being cursed. Being cursed. So the Spirit of God curses you. That's one of His ministries. He curses you. He just curses you to do the right thing. He just causes you to be the right person. He just curses you. So much that, you know, the wrong people are deleted from your path. The Holy Ghost is causing you to do the right thing. He's causing you to go to the right place. He's going, causing you to do the right thing at the right time. He's causing you to meet the right people. I prophesy that into your life. The Holy Spirit is causing you to move forward. He's causing you to move forward.